the Jack-O-Lantern. You see them around town every October. They're incorporated into every Halloween-themed display and packaging in sight. For one month every year, they're inescapable. The Jack-O-Lantern is without a doubt the most iconic, recognizable, ubiquitous Halloween symbol we have. Nothing tells you what time of year it is faster than the familiar glow of a carved pumpkin. But have you ever wondered why? Why do we go pick out pumpkins, the bright orange gourd seemingly forgotten for the rest of the year, and carve faces into them, place a flickering candle inside, and put them on our front porch every Halloween? Where exactly did this peculiar Halloween tradition originate, and why do we still do it today? And why are they called jack-o'-lanterns? Halloween Haven is here to answer those questions in the first installment of our Halloween history series, where we set out to answer where this day called Halloween came from and why we celebrate this unique holiday in the way that we do. Welcome to Halloween Haven. <laughs> the surprising origins of the jack-o'-lantern stretch hundreds of years back to Irish folklore and actually have nothing to do with pumpkins at all. According to legend, this all began with a man known as Stingy Jack. A drunken swindler, Stingy Jack was a man of low reputation. So low, in fact, that when Satan heard of his deeds, he immediately decided that he must claim Jack's soul. Once the devil caught up to Jack, the drunkard begged Satan to allow him one final drink in this mortal realm. Reluctantly, the devil agreed. After finishing his drink, Stingy Jack, living up to his nickname, refused to pay the bill. He suggested that Satan turn himself into a coin with which he may pay his bill, and then they'd be on their way. Wishing to finally take Jack's soul back with him to hell, the devil agreed and turned himself into the needed silver coin to cover the tab. Stingy Jack quickly took the coin and dropped it into his pocket where a silver crucifix lay, preventing the devil from turning back to his original form. Stingy Jack eventually freed the devil, but not until he agreed to not return for Jack's soul for 10 years. Ten years later to the day, Satan returned for Jack's devious soul. Nearly forgetting their previous deal, Jack agreed as long as Satan would allow Jack one final snack for their journey to the afterlife. Satan need only climb a tree and pick Stingy Jack an apple. The devil obliged and climbed the tree to pick Jack his apple. Unbeknownst to the devil, he'd fallen for another of Jack's tricks as he carved a cross into the trunk, trapping Satan in the tree above. Stingy Jack proved just as stingy in his mercy as with his coin, not relenting to any of Satan's pleadings to release him from the tree. Satan finally came to an agreeable accord with Jack that would allow him to leave the tree, but it came at a heavy price. Satan agreed to never take Stingy Jack's soul to hell. Eventually, death came for Stingy Jack. Unable to cheat death in the same manner he had Satan, Jack's soul was shuffled off to heaven but his life of sinful behavior ensured that he would be barred from the pearly gates by St. Peter. With no other choice, Jack arrived to hell, where Satan greeted Stingy Jack with a devilish grin. For Satan had not forgotten their deal, Jack's soul was barred from hell as well. As such, Stingy Jack's soul was cast back to earth. In a final act of mercy, Satan granted Jack's last wish and gave him a single coal burning with hellfire to light his way in a dark world. Stingy Jack placed the burning coal into a carved turnip and was left to roam our mortal realm, forever to be known as Jack of the Lantern, or as we say today, Jack-O-Lantern. Many would claim to see faint lights in the distance at night, only to quickly lose sight of what they had seen. We know now that there's likely a scientific explanation for these sightings, a phenomenon called Will-O-The-Wisps. These were strange, sometimes colored lights that appeared like those of a lantern and were known to lead travelers off their path in search of the source of the glow. Known as Fool's Fire, Fairy Lights, or Ignis Fatus, these eerie lights appear and flicker over marshlands and bogs and have their own storied place in folklore. They even have their own origin legend, much like that of Stingy Jack. Science has theorized that these lights were photon emissions from the oxidation of certain chemical compounds, but the locals knew better. They knew that these were sightings of Stingy Jack's everlasting lantern. As the legend of Stingy Jack spread, so did the fear of evil spirits such as Jack's among the Irish villages. Believing that spirits could freely travel to our world on October 31st, the Celtic festival of Samhain, the Irish needed to take measures to protect themselves and their families. Their solution was simple, yet effective, and would prove timeless as we still follow in their footsteps today. 
They would take turnips, rutabagas, and other gourds and carve menacing faces into them. Then they would display them in front of their door in the hopes of warding off any evil spirits who may come knocking. The Irish carried this tradition with them during their migration to the United States in the early 19th and 20th centuries, where they would soon find a new, superior vessel for their custom. This, of course, was the pumpkin. And this was quite an improvement on the custom, as the turnips originally used were fickle to work with, and the faces carved into them were quite creepy. Native to the Americas, the immigrants would find that pumpkins were both abundant and much easier to hollow out and carve. As more and more immigrants arrived in the U.S. and spread out, so did the tradition. And now, hundreds of years later, we can't even think about Halloween without imagining a flicker of candlelight faintly glowing out from behind a wry, toothy, smiling face carved into a bright orange pumpkin. Though the original purpose of the jack-o'-lantern was to ward off evil spirits, virtually all Halloween celebrants nowadays carve jack-o'-lanterns because that's just what you do for Halloween. And it's what we've always done for Halloween. Ever since the holiday became popularized in the 1800s, people have been taking part in this tradition, carving pumpkins to include in their Halloween decorations. And I mean a lot of people taking part, with nearly half of the United States joining in. It's serious business. An estimated 149 million jack-o'-lanterns will be carved for decoration in the U.S. this year, with an estimated 2022 expenditure on pumpkins, specifically for the holiday, exceeding $800 million. And of course, it's a big draw for all the record breakers out there as well. The record for the most jack-o'-lanterns lit in one place surpasses more than 30,000, and the record for the biggest jack-o'-lantern tips the scales at over 2,300 pounds. With so many people following this custom, it's no surprise that the tradition has evolved over these hundreds of years. The once simple act of carving a face into a turnip has turned into an outright artistic endeavor by creative revelers. People soon found that they could carve pretty much anything they could imagine into these pumpkins and the rest is history. While most will still opt to go with a simple, silly yet sinister face for their pumpkin, others have taken this tradition to new heights with their creativity and craftsmanship. Interesting techniques such as shaving down the pumpkin skin have been worked into the fray, and professions have been built upon the artistry involved in carving jack-o'-lanterns. Today you'll see all manner of faces, scenes, symbols, and designs up and down the street, and many towns have founded massive pumpkin festivals with thousands of jack-o'-lanterns on display. Lucky for all of us, this is one tradition that is here to stay. And to think this all started with a cursed drunkard named Jack, who carried around a turnip. So now you know exactly why we carve faces into pumpkins and display them outside our homes every Halloween. Do jack-o'-lanterns actually keep evil spirits wandering our realm away from our homes? We may never know, but it's best to keep carving pumpkins every year and not take any chances. Thank you for joining me in learning about this important part of Halloween history. This is just the first installment of many videos I'll be putting out regarding the origins of traditions we take part in, as well as videos on the various legends that have made Halloween the special holiday we celebrate today. I want to make Halloween Haven your source for all things Halloween. Click that red subscribe button below to catch my future Halloween history videos. These will range from the origins of trick-or-treating to the foundational myths behind Halloween's ghastliest creatures, and all the way to how the holiday has evolved over the centuries. Comment below, did you know prior to today the origin of the jack-o'-lantern? Have you heard any other origin story behind it? Please like the video if you enjoyed this jaunt through Halloween history today, and thank you again for joining me. Happy Halloween.